Hey guys, we are moving forward here with some information about how we measure the economy. We're talking about inflation today. Um, so just real simply put, uh, inflation is just when the price of goods increase. Okay. And so that can be caused by a few things. It could be caused by an increase in population. You think back to our demand shifters that make prices go up. So we get more people, uh, people kind of change their minds about things. Um, it can also be caused by, you know, a shortage of, of goods and services as well. So, you know, the price of fuel goes up, um, you know, the price of labor goes up. Um, so anyway, we're talking about inflation. We're talking about how it gets figured out. We'll try to rip through this pretty quick. Um, a couple different terms that, that you'll want to understand is a lot of people consider inflation as a really bad thing. And we think that, oh, when prices go up, that's not good. Well, Remember, inflation, we just mentioned the demand side of things. And inflation, when it's caused by demand, an increase in demand, okay, and that basically means people are spending money, all right? And um, if you remember, too, from our earlier discussion about unemployment, when we have high unemployment, inflation tends to go down. And so prices going down aren't necessarily a good thing either. So what we want is this idea, it's referred to as creeping inflation. Like we want prices to go up about one to 3% per year, maybe 3% is a little bit too high. Okay. But we want to know, we want to be able to predict what's going to happen. Okay. And so some inflation is kind of necessary. Again, the government prints more money. Um, those types of things are, are to help stabilize and help us like know what's going to happen. Now, if we get to this point where we have what is referred to as hyperinflation, that's extremely high inflation. That's no good. Okay. That's when prices go up so fast. All right. That people rushed to spend money. So kind of envision the situation. If you could, if you could imagine gas prices, were going to go up by, let's just say 10 cents every hour until the foreseeable future. How often would you buy gasoline? Well, the answer is, is you would buy gasoline as often as possible. And so when we think the prices are going to increase really fast, we actually rush to spend our money as fast as we can, which creates another problem referred to as hyperinflation. This happened probably most famously in Germany in the 1930s. And those of you familiar with with world history, U.S. history, um, a guy named by a guy by the name of Adolf Hitler was able to control power. He used that hyperinflation as one of the uh, one of the factors that he said he would try to fix. And and the economic situation that Germany was in, he was able to you know utilize some of that crisis to convince people to obviously eventually elect him into some political power. Um, but either way, okay, the United States hasn't necessarily experienced that in, in any recent history. Deflation are was when prices are going to go down. And as we mentioned, deflation, probably not considered a good thing. We would think, hey, gas prices are ch or prices are cheaper, right? Where, um, you know, like, oh, okay, well, that's a good thing. Well, it's not really a good thing because remember, when prices go cheaper, the people selling those products are probably earning a lower income, which if they're earning a lower income, lower revenue, that probably leads to um, some unemployment eventually, and those aren't necessarily those aren't necessarily good things either. Okay, so kind of a tricky concept in that regard because we know we want prices to go down so we can afford more stuff. But as speaking as an economy as a whole, when prices go down, that's probably not necessarily a good thing. Okay, so the easiest way it's figured out is. Um, is it's just a percentage increase in the average prices of goods. And towards the end, I will, I will give you an example of, of how to figure out that percentage increase. Um, but that is what it is. Now, the tricky part is, is we don't talk in percentages, right? When gas prices go up by 20 cents a gallon overnight and we wake up the next morning and they're more expensive, we don't say, oh, gas prices went up by 8.3% today. We don't think that way. Right. So we like to think of ways like, OK, we like to give that flat number. Oh, gas prices went up by 20 cents a gallon. That's no that's 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 not a good thing. OK. Now, the tricky part about that is, is that when we analyze things, we like to speak in percentages. Right. Because if we say, hey, gas prices went up by you know, 35 cents. Well, like, okay, what's that mean? Like, how do we know if that's a lot? How do we know if that's a little? And especially when we talk about from one year to the next, you know, we say, okay, well, gas prices went up by 10 cents a gallon this month. Like, how do we understand like if that's good or bad, right? 10 cents a gallon for gas, 
uh, per month is way different than say 10 cents a gallon or 10 cents per pound of steak, right? Steak is way more expensive. And so we like to look at it in percentages to make things a little bit easier for us to see. Um, the other, the other, uh, the other value that we look at in terms of figuring this out is referred to as the consumer price index. And the consumer price index basically just tracks a number of goods. So the government basically says, okay, these are goods that are necessities, and we're going to track the prices of these things. We're going to combine them all, and eventually we're going to say, okay, this is the inflation rate. And so to say, okay, like necessities, well, we're worried about what happens to the price of milk, gasoline, bread, um, meat, right? Chicken, steak, whatever. But we're not worried about the price of Ferraris or yachts or probably even RVs in that case, just simply because those are extreme, those are extreme luxury goods. Okay. So it's trying to be as accurate as possible. Um, and it tracks these things. It applies the percentage to, uh, or I'm sorry, it supplies the prices and figures out the percentage. Okay, so if you if you wanted to look historically at what the inflation rates were over a long period of time, there's certain ways you can do it. Um, either way, as you can see, there is a there is an extremely large amount of numbers here. And again, the United States has tracked this stuff every year for the last for the last hundred years or so, 110, 105 years or so. And you can see, like Great Depression, you can see you're looking at this column here. Prices actually go down. Right. So the Great Depression didn't happen because everything was so expensive. The Great Depression has because no one had any money when they don't have any money. We've got to lower prices. OK, so in the late 70s, we also had a situation where fuel prices went way up. We had some significant inflation there. OK. And again, um, you could look at these stats if you wanted to. It's a little bit over the top. You don't have to have them memorized. Now, what these what they do with this, how they figure out these numbers is they figure out this. CPI, okay, consumer price index in this basket of goods. And so like we said, the basket of goods includes includes all these necess all these necessities. And these necessities prices get tracked and they come up with this number. If you go way back to 1914 is when they started this statistic and they just started with a nice round number of $10. And so if you ever hear like, okay, somebody's somebody's uh, salary um, was $100,000. I, I think like Babe Ruth was the first baseball player to make $100,000. Like, how do you figure out how much money that is today? Well, they use a math problem. They take that. And so back in 1914, the price of things $10. Well, as of March 2020, you'd have to have $258 to have that same to have that same value of money. OK. And so, you know, just if you guys go back to when you were born, 2000, 2001, right, one hundred and seventy seven dollars. Now you would need to. So whatever you were buying, now you would need to have two hundred and fifty eight dollars to buy the same stuff. And so anyway, that's kind of how they figure it out. They combine those two stats. Um, you don't need to necessarily know how to do that. It's just a different way of, of being able to see what is going on. OK, so. <clears throat> the other thing is, is, is this, this graph shows us the inflation rate and it's easier for us to look at this graph and say, okay, inflation, we had deflation back in the great depression, right? We had some really high inflation in the late 19, early 1950s, high inflation in the seventies and eighties deflation here. It's easy to see on a graph with the percentages. We can't really think about how much prices change by percentage, right? But um, it does show us that. Whereas if we were to look at a graph historically of CPI, okay, it just kind of always goes up. We know prices are going to kind of increase a little bit in terms of, in terms of what's going on. Um, inflation is a inflation is a good example of of looking at price per gallon because the reason we tie price per gallon of gasoline in so much is because like we know we have to spend about the same amount of money on gas every single week no matter what and so if the price of gasoline changes really fast right that means we have to spend more money on gas and we're probably able to spend less money on any any other number of things right maybe so we don't drive somewhere on vacation obviously the price of fuel is going to make the price of airplane tickets go up and so it's definitely going to hurt traveling but even within like your own general you know little circle of life like if you have to spend all your money on gas well now you can't afford to go out to eat maybe you can't afford to go to the movies whatever the case might be and so the the biggest period of growth that the united states has experienced um at least through at least leading up to 2000 was from the 1980s 
through the year 2000. And so you can see that, well, in the 1980s, just to give you an idea, okay, now you've got to kind of fast forward to 2000. So my dad is a teacher, right? And in 1980, so back here, right? He's paying a dollar ten per gallon. My dad signed his first teaching contract for $8,500 a year, okay? So obviously throughout this time, all right, throughout this course of 20 years or so to the year 2000, the price of gasoline doesn't really change. The average teacher salary in the state of Indiana in the year 2000 was about $40,000 a year. So if my dad is, is average, right, he starts out making that little bit amount of money, spending the same amount on gasoline for 20 years, right? But after 20 years, he's making somewhere in the range of twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 more per year than what he was before, right? Well, think about what's he going to spend that stuff on, that money on? Well, he can spend it on whatever he wants, right? And so that's going to help the rest of the economy grow. That's going to help those types of things happen. 2008, 2009, we hit this recession. Well, part of the reason was, is, and especially in Elkhart, is people had to spend all this money on gas. RV industry struggled to, to keep pace with, with the sales they'd had in the past because not only do I have to spend all my money on gasoline, but there's no way I can put gas to tow an RV or drive an RV. And so anyway, those were some of the challenges. Obviously, the price of gas kind of went down and after a short period of time, went back up after a while. But anyway, hopefully you're able to tie those, tie those through, tie those into you know how these things affect the economy. All right. We kind of mentioned it can be on the demand side, okay, of things that cause inflation, demand pull inflation, por forcing prices up, higher population, more income, any number of things. And we also have cost push inflation. That would be like a decrease in supply, price of labor, price of resources increase. Um, that eventually that eventually causes prices to increase. Okay. We also have this concept of the wage price spiral kind of goes with a combination of these two. I give somebody a raise, right? That increases demand for stuff. Well, if I give them a raise, it also raises my cost of production. It kind of combines that cost push with the demand pull, and it makes prices go up. So some reasons why, again, inflation may not be our best measure is, first of all, we can substitute stuff, right? We can buy chicken instead of steak. We can ride our bikes instead of buying gasoline. Again, some of those things we can substitute doesn't necessarily affect everybody just because prices go up. We can buy in bulk, okay? Um, sometimes new products such as cell phones, especially recently, like weren't considered necessities. 1995 cell phones are a necessity. OK, obviously, I would say in 2020, I would say cell phones are very close to necessity. But at the same time, we don't need to pay for we don't need to pay for land landlines either. But we do need to pay for Internet at home also. And so, you know, sometimes the, the things that we look at as necessities kind of change. Um, and then again, sometimes the quality of things change. They last longer, uh, makes us have to pay less over the long period, over a long period of time. <clears throat> Inflation's bad. First of all, I can't buy as much. Right. If I'm on a fixed income, meaning I'm retired, meaning I don't have a job um, and my income is fixed. Right. Then it's going to affect me because if I have to pay more money for gas next week, I only bring in the same amount of money and those prices keep going up and my income doesn't change. OK, that affects those people the most. Interest rates increase, meaning I can't borrow as much money to build a house, start a business, buy a car. Um, and if inflation is prevalent we lose some of that economic efficiency the prediction of prices and those types of things okay and we like to know what the prices are going to be okay that is my talk on inflation for you um, i'm going to show you quickly here an example of how to solve these problems on that paper that i sent on monday okay so that paper on monday involves unemployment it also involves inflation i'll show you how to do the inflation problems here in a second Okay, so I came up with a quick couple of practice problems here to figure out um, our change in our inflation rate. So as you can see, I've got product A, I've got product B, okay, and I give you a 2019 price, I give you a 2018 price, okay, and so you'll see on the on the paper, you know how to how it's set up. All right, you might need a calculator for some of that stuff, but figuring this out is is extremely extremely easy once you figure out what you're doing. So the equation that you'll use is you're going to use the change in price, okay, divided by the original. All righty. So over here we've got our original price of one dollar, 
okay? We've got our change of 0 0.05, just a nickel, all righty? So you plug that into a calculator, and you're going to multiply it by 100, all right? In this particular case, you should get an answer of 5%. So our inflation rate for product A is 5%. Okay. For the next one, we're going to do this very similar to the same thing. I'm going to change my color to get fancy here. Um, and we're figuring out, obviously, it goes up by $1.50. All righty. So $1.50 over our original, which is $10. Okay. We're going to multiply it by 100 also. Okay. Make sure you push enter before you multiply by 100, and you should get 15 percent in this particular case okay i think some of the math problems are a little more challenging than being able to do it in your head so make sure you have your calculator ready when you get to that particular point all righty and um i think that you'll be fine um just as a just as a reminder this is what your this is what your paper looks like right you had the unemployment stuff up on top you had the inflation stuff down at the bottom you've got to do a few simple few simple problems okay i went a little bit long today Tomorrow, or I'm sorry, for Friday, things will be really quick. We're going to talk about four different definitions of, of uh, unemployment, and the uh, assignment will not take very long either, okay? So anyway, I figured you'd want a short assignment going into the weekend, a little bit longer today. So anyway, I hope you're having I'm enjoying some of this nice weather. We'll get you done fast on Friday. I'll even obviously post it on Thursday. I'm usually a day ahead. That way you can get it done if you want. It's supposed to be 72 degrees on Saturday. So hopefully we can enjoy ourselves a little bit and, um, you know, kind of go from there. All right. We will talk soon.